Hey everyone, I am Team Fight Tonka, and I want to go over what might be the best and most consistent top 4 comp in the game right now that isn't being contested by 3 or more people every single lobby, and that comp is Beyblade Warlords. I'm previously a Masters player throughout all of set 3, I'm currently sitting at plat 1 with a 65% win rate using this core strategy. Uh, if you go look at my match history, you can see that I top 4 fairly consistently with a wide variety of different builds by the end game. Uh, but my early and mid game uh, playstyle basically stays the same every time if I can make it happen. So for this guide, I want to show you my general layout for the early mid game and then dive deeper into four end game variations involving the key players in my Beyblade Warrior comp, which are Katarina, J4, and Azir. I've linked all the comp info below if you want to skip listening to me, but if you want the breakdown for each section of the game and how to successfully transition it to an end game comp, then stick around and let's get into it. What a quality title card. So why this comp? It's a very strong and super easy three piece to hit. On top of that, unlike some of the other traits, you're never wasting a slot by adding in extra warlords between the trait limits. So running additional warlords at four, five, seven, or eight still grants them a huge buff from the trait itself. Uh, so three warlord buff without the stacks from winning is actually worth a giant's belt in health and more ability power than a rod while six Warlords is worth more than the base stats of a Warmog and a hat on each Warlord. Uh, so this means that depending on what other traits you might be able to plug in, uh, running two two-star Warlords is sometimes the better option just based on the extra stats you can hit. This comp has a lot of potential to hit Chosen at all levels. So in total, there are six Warlords, one Assassin, and two Keepers that you're looking out for. Uh, I know there are seven Warlords, but hitting Warlord Azir is just not going to happen, and if for whatever reason it does, you're not going to pivot into Warlord at level 9. Uh, so if you hit any of these, you should strongly consider one of the four comps I'm going to show you. The overall item requirements to win with this comp are really low as well, but they're definitely specific. So there are essentially three core items, with one being flexible, uh, and they are a Sunfire Cape for Garen, a QSS for Cat, and then either a Gunblade or a Hand of Justice on Katarina, even though Gunblade is definitely preferred. Uh, so this leaves a lot of flexibility to itemize whatever other carries are on your team. And this comp can also make uh, really good use of a spat by either going Warlord or Assassin. Uh, the other nice thing is that this comp doesn't need three stars, uh, but you can definitely secure a top spot easily with the three star cat. Uh, that said, go for whatever three stars are close, but you don't have to roll down super hard to hit it. A board full of two stars is definitely enough to get top four easily. Uh, and then the last point is going back um, about Warlord being a strong trait. If you don't manage to hit any of the chosen units you need or good cat items in this comp, uh, it's strong enough to get you through to level seven and save you enough HP early game and mid game and be flexible and cheap enough to actually just instantly pivot into a new comp for whatever three or four cost carry you hit at level seven. So at the very least, and this is what I do most, is I'll just run these Warlords until I actually hit a unit I want to pivot into. Okay, so chosen aside, your key units that you're going to look for to really decide whether you're going to run this comp is going to be Garen, J4, Cat, and Pike. If you can secure those four units early, you know that you've got a good shot at running this. Uh, so I'm going to show you a preview of my early game. My general best early game that I can look for is definitely three Warlords with either a Vanguard or a Brawler pair, using either Garen or Vi, depending if you hit. I really prefer to run J4 early a lot of the time because I think his ability is super high value. Um, generally, the way people set up their boards early is they will leave a direct line of units all the way to the backline carry, and J4 will knock all of them up and buy you the time you need. Uh, so early game, you're looking to build QSS and Sunfire Cape ASAP. Uh, so it doesn't matter what your items are, a Katarina without QSS will never alt, and you will always be mad about it. So mid game has generally two variations for me, uh, and it's going to depend on whether I've hit all the all six of the warlords or if i'm still just running one chosen warlord uh, so this is if you only hit one chosen warlord so you're going to just run your three piece warlord and then you're also going to look to put in your two assassins and two enlightened combo uh, i can't stress this enough the combo of nami and janna early game 
you can run this in basically every comp and they will probably win streak you through to wolves if you can keep them alive long enough. Uh, the amount of CC and shields that these two units provide, especially if you can drop an early blue buff on Janna or even have her hold your tiers, you'll win quite a few more games. Uh, so if you hit early Warlord and you manage to hit the other five Warlords that you need, uh, your level six is super straightforward. You're going to run six Warlord and then two Assassin. Uh, by this point, you should have at least one Katarina and her QSS done, along with a tank item for Garen. Uh, Nidalee can be used to placehold all your other items. She never makes it to the endgame comp for any of these, unless she happens to be your Warlord. So your level 7 is going to vary, but statistically, if you're trying to force this comp, then you're generally going to have your Warlord chosen instead of the Keeper or Assassin Cat variants. Uh, so I prefer to run Kennen as my mid-game Keeper to add range damage and, and good stun, but Riven or Elise can also work here. Uh, Cat should be fully itemized or close to being fully itemized by this point. Uh, this is also the point of the game where you sort of decide if you're going to continue going down the Warlord path or branch if you didn't make the proper hits. Uh, even without Chosen, this level 7 variation is super strong on its own. Um, and without a Warlord Chosen, you can drop Kennen for a Zin to make the 6 Warlord. Okay, so let's dive into each of the comps. So the first one here is what I think is the absolute best version of this comp. I think it just welds together really nicely. So this is if you hit a Chosen Assassin Katarina. Uh, what this does early is it lets you not have to run Pike or Talon, and it really lets you just run an entire board full of your six Warlords plus Katarina. Fully itemized Katarina with the double assassin buff is easily enough to enough to get you through levels six to eight until you're ready to add in those other two assassins. Uh, one thing to note is the Lissandras are obviously your Azir clones. This is the best setup for them because it will take any assassins to the back line and it should protect your Azir long enough for your Katarina to really just take off. Uh, the other thing we should talk about is why this is the Beyblade comp. So realistically, Jarvan is your ripcord. He's going to alt to the back line, usually wherever Katarina is. If you notice in all of these clips, I have Katarina usually lined up right behind Jarvan. So what happens is Jarvan's going to alt towards the furthest back unit. So right probably about 75% of the way for Katarina to be alting. And she's going to alt and kill everyone while they're all still stunned. Um... That's about all we have to say about this comp. Uh, the second carry you want to itemize here is Talon. Any bows go into an RFC or anything like that for him. Pike makes good use of extra mana items. Uh, Sojin or Frozen Heart work well on him. And then Zinza and Azir sort of are up in the air. Uh, I think Zinza has a lot of value that's overlooked, um, but he's a great damage reduction tank. I like to put him here just in case an assassin lands in the spot right beside the second Azir soldier and manages to one tap it. Um, but if you have the chance and you hit that uh, assassin chosen Katarina, this is what your endgame comp should look like. So the second best version of this comp is the one where you hit any warlord. Um, doesn't matter which one you hit, you'll run that warlord and then you'll run six other warlords. Uh, so the reason I like this one less than the first one is because you're forced to run either Diana, which is garbage, or Akali, which is slightly less garbage. Uh, the reason that Akali is really bad in this comp is that she is going to be the third assassin that you, or sorry, she's going to be the last assassin that you itemize because Katarina is better than Talon, Talon is better than Pike, and Pike is better than Akali in this specific setup. <clears throat> So at no point is Akali realistically ever going to get items, and she just doesn't do much. Uh, the comp runs almost the exact same way, uh, and then the Azir soldiers are a bit different. They're going to vary game to game, but this is just, if I get to choose, if I'm not worried about anyone, this is probably going to be my default positioning with the Azir soldiers. So the third best variation of this comp is also if you hit a Warlord, but at the same time if you naturally hit a Spatula. So I don't really like going for this comp because I think it needs to get to 9 to really excel afterwards. Um, because you're not going to get a lot of 
extra traits by running this. That said, the bonus from it is insane, especially if you're still winning. But I will never go out of my way to make this comp. I think strength-wise, it's relatively equal to the first two comps that I showed you. But because I like to take this comp to nine and you need a spatula for it, the power that you get from this isn't high enough that it's better than the other comp. Like, I will never just go for a spatula off a carousel if I don't have to. I would rather use those items elsewhere. Uh, so yeah, definitely a version of the comp you can run. Uh, keynote is I like to run Sejuani instead of Aatrox. What I've found is when I play Aatrox, he alts pretty close to the time that Cat is going to alt. So I've had a couple situations where he pulls away the corner carries and then Cat doesn't kill them with their alt. Sometimes they still die in the center of my entire team, but it's a risk you don't need to take and Sejuani really helps to just lock down the team. A uh, lot less contested too. And the final variation of this comp, which I do think is the weakest of the four, but I have had success with it, is if you hit a Keeper Jarvan or a Keeper Riven. Um, <clears throat> generally, I'm not still forcing this comp long enough to hit a Keeper Riven, uh, but if I hit that early Keeper Jarvan, this is the way I would play the comp if I still want to put in Warlords. So you'll notice that I do only run three Warlords. I don't think there is a better way to run six Warlords with a Keeper Jarvan. Uh, at least not a safer way to do it um, because a lot of the power does come from Katarina and I like to run four assassin as much as possible with this comp. Uh, so you'll notice the itemization all still relatively the same. Akali is actually just an assassin trait and we don't really care about her. Uh, but the difference is with this comp, we get to splash in some more CC from Cassiopeia and we get to give the entire team that 20% dusk buff. Uh, the other reason why I rate this comp quite a bit lower than the other ones is because of how contested Riven and Cass are. The whole point of this build is to, sorry, the whole point of the Beyblade Warlord build is to not be contested by every other person running Cat and Cassiopeia. Sorry, Riven and Cassiopeia. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to try and force this build. But if you hit that early Jarvan, this is definitely a way that you can hit that endgame comp. And that's everything I have for you guys. Uh, I hope at the very least you guys can open your eyes up a bit to some of these other comps that, that are a lot less contested. Uh, I myself am going to continue abusing my comp until all of you start to play it. Um, if you have any suggestions, any feedback, let me know. If there's a comp you want me to break down for you, I'm more than happy to. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something, and I will see you guys later.